This session is between, my name is Howie Xu. I'm the R&D director for networking and IO technology at VMware. I've been with VMware for more than eight years. How many of you actually attended uh, Paul Merritt's and uh, Steve Harold's keynote speech yesterday? Okay, pretty much most of you, that's good. This session is really about peeling the onion, the networking layer of the onion a little bit. So Paul and uh, Steve's keynote speech really set a stage for what VMware is looking at for the next few years. And if you heard about this new infrastructure, virtual joint, networking has the same notion in a way, so you will find out. Disclaimer. As if the disclaimer were not enough, I wanted to give you more disclaimer. Uh, number one, this session is not about announcing any product or timeline whatsoever. This is a technology session we wanted to discuss with you um, the customer problems we are seeing and uh, our perspective on how to solve some of the key customer pain points. We view networking virtualization as a journey. We are at the beginning of a journey. We didn't finish it, it's the beginning of a journey. It's a journey to transform IT and IT networking significantly. It's a very exciting journey, and it's a, it's a journey that won't be successful without you. Now, VMworld used to be a virtualization or server people's conference. And uh, these days, it's no longer true. Three years ago, when Ch John Chambers delivered a keynote speech at VMworld, I have a customer came to me and I said, why John is here? Now people are asking me why uh, the CEO of the Cisco is not here, uh, the other way around. Now, show of your hands, there are really four categories of people, I assume you are in one of those. Virtualization server architects, admins, networking architects, all of the above, and none of the above. Show of your hands, how many of you are in the virtualization server admin category? And how many of you are in the networking admins? Okay. And then all of those? Wow, a lot. And then none of the above? And why are you here? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think there is a reason for you to be here. Tell me in the end whether it's worthwhile or not. Let me start with the industry trend. The industry trend that's significantly impacting networking companies roadmap. What are the industry trend? What do you think? Obviously, virtualization is a big part of that. One cannot design a virtual data center without virtual networking strategy. Every networking company is doing something with vSphere integration. Mobility is one piece of that. However, there is more than, way more than mobility. We'll get to that in the, next, in the rest of the talk. What else? Convergence. Convergence is really an overloaded term. If you ask server guys, networking guys, they may give you a different answer for what convergence means. But really, there is networking and a server convergence. There is networking and a storage convergence. Storage traffic is our networking transport. Maybe it's iSCSI, FCOE, NFS, you name it. And the networking and the server are converging as well. You see the, a lot of the network intelligence is built into the server these days. Three, um, HP actually bought a 3Com early this year. Intel bought McAfee just very recently. It will be interesting to see how much they wanted to push those networking security stuff onto the, potentially the hardware. The biggest networking company in the world is now officially a server OEM. And that speaks a lot on the convergence level. Server, networking, there is no more black and white line between these two. What else? 
what other things happening in the industry that's changing the networking industry significantly? This is a VMworld. At VMworld, you cannot have a presentation without talking about cloud. To VMworld, to VMware, cloud is not a destination. Cloud is economics. We wanted to bring the efficiency, agility, and the control to the user. That's what VMware's perspective on the cloud. Since all of us, most of you went to Steve and the Paul Merritt's keynote speech, I just put a picture there. It's virtual joint, new stack, new infrastructure. I'm pretty sure all of you get a good reading on what that is. And at the end of the day, it's three different things. Efficiency, get the most out of your infrastructure. Resilience, bring quality of service into your business production environment. And then the business agility, IT as a service. So that's pretty much the vision Steve and Paul elaborated yesterday. Now, how do we map this vision into the networking side? On the networking side, we did a bunch of things. In order to support a virtualization and a consolidation, we had, this mani- we had this virtual switch. And then we released the distributed virtual switch last year. And a variation of that, Nexus 1000V, together with Cisco. We will continue to evolve distributed virtual switch in the next few years. For instance, just uh, two months ago, we released vSphere 4.1. We added a very cool feature, networking I.O. control into the VDS. Because we recognize that converged fabric is going to take its prime stage. People want to put storage, networking, maybe many other type of traffic, for instance, vMotion, FT, onto the same fabric, same adapter, same virtual switch. Yet at the same time, people want peace of mind. People want control. You don't want bad things happen just because you put different type of traffic on the same fabric. We will continue to improve the monitoring capability, debugging capability, troubleshooting capabilities into the distributed virtual switch. If I remember, I'll give you the story on why I chose the green color for the cloud. But people always ask us, What is your next big thing after distributed virtual switch? Now, my answer is pretty simple. Cloud. Cloud is universally true answer for anything on this planet. But if you read into this, what is the cloud that has to do with networking, that has to do with VMware's roadmap on networking? Cloud is all about elastic, Elasticity, efficiency, pay-as-you-go business model, frictionless deployment, on-demand. This is the type of the things people are looking for, the economics people are looking for from the cloud. And we wanted to translate that into the networking perspective a little bit. In particular, we think it's, two, it's four things that people need to do on the networking virtualization to meet this type of cloud economics. That is this anything, anytime, anywhere, at any scale. What is this anything? Imagine you can provision any type of workload with any type of enterprise quality of service you want. Cloud is not about second-class citizen. 
you, you don't want this noisy neighborhood thing that Steve was talking about. We don't want, depending on what time of the day, you get different level of qualitative service. Any time. Imagine you can spin up and spin down a workload at any time of the day, rapidly, instantaneously, with the end-to-end -end networking configuration. It's not just about networking layer two connectivities. It's about networking security, low balance policies, potentially when acceleration, application performance monitoring. It's the whole stack. That's what I mean by layer 227 networking services. Anywhere, imagine you can deploy a virtual machine anywhere you have capacity. Not anywhere you have the VLAN pre-provisioned, compliance pre-provisioned. Networking isolation or compliance policies should follow the workload, but not the other way around. You don't want workload to be locked in the rack just because that's how much networking layer 227 policies has been provisioned by the networking guys. In a scale, None of the above is super difficult to do unless you are talking about massive scale. Scalability is not just about scaling up, but also scaling down. Scaling vertically and horizontally and economically. Now, with this type of requirements, it became pretty obvious that we want a new networking platform for the workload. Workload or the application needs to see a very flexible infrastructure. VMware did exactly that for computing infrastructure. We wanted to do this for networking and I.O. infrastructure as well. And that's what we call it, distributed virtual network. Unfortunately, the reality is probably a little bit closer to this rather than the previous few slides I showed. Now, let me, give you, let me read a few quotes from, this is actually from Networking, Network World just last week. Virtualization creates new sources and a destination for traffic in a moment's notice. Network managers in the, in the past didn't have to worry about that level, that rate of change. It's a much more dynamic environment now. Now, what's the solution for server guys when the networking people tell you this is too fast. I cannot deal with this level of pace. I'll tell you one solution. One solution is whenever you come to VMworld, you need to bring your networking guys along with you so that they get to know how dynamic the data center will look like. Now, this is the quote from the same article. With the tight budgets, we knew we weren't going to get more staff, so we had to find a way to make our current technicians more efficient and take away the drudge work from them. So the key here is to take the drudge work from them, right? So let's look at the distributed virtual network a little bit more. Why is the network a little bit inflexible or a little bit stagnant today? We have a distributed virtual switch, right? Now, whenever you want to provision application, you want it to provision a workload, you need to do a number of things. You need to deal with the distributed virtual switch. Sometimes you need to deal with the IP address management. People are telling us that 
it's one mouse click away for me to provision a virtual machine, but then I have to wait a few more hours to get IP address for that virtual machine sometimes. You have to deal with the physical switch to make sure the VLAN quality of service, if any, is provisioned end to end. It doesn't make any sense to provision VLAN only on the V switch. Low balance and many, many other layer 4 to 7 or routing service. So at the end of the day, there is a lot of coordination work needed for this layer 2 to 7 service. There's a lot of human intervention. There's a lot of, it's fairly human intensive. There is a gap between the machine speed and the human speed. And because of that, network doesn't look like as transparent as the people who manage the workload. The people who manage the workload want the network to be transparent. Whenever I want it to do things, it just happens. Anything, anytime, anywhere, at any scale. Now, there are a lot of incremental things you can do today to help you on this scenario. VMware is certainly adding a lot of the monitoring capabilities into the vSwitch. Our ecosystem is integrating with our vSwitch too. You probably saw some of the announcement just made this week by a few of our switch friends. But if you step back and then look at those problems or issues, those are not new issues. Remember I mentioned this mobility in the virtualization, in the in industry trend. Keep in mind that virtualization, this level of change, just make the problem more obvious. The real problem is you don't have the anytime, anywhere, because even in the pure physical world, can you provision a workload, a physical workload, instantaneously, anywhere you want, at any scale, for any quality of service? That's the real problem. Now, let's look at this architecture a little bit differently. You still need to work on this. You still need to have all those layer 227 services. You cannot get away from that. You still want performance monitoring, networking acceleration, networking load balance. You still need to deal with that. However, just like any difficult computer science problems, the solution is easy. Add one layer of abstraction. A standard networking management layer that different type of networking service is going to map into this standard management layer, plug into this networking management layer, so that the workload sees a uniform, idealized, distributed network. Like I said, VMware did that for computing infrastructure already, and VMware wanted to be the thought leader on the networking side, too. On top of that, we also see that a new type of networking layer 2 to 7 service being developed that's scale out, on demand, multi tenancy friendly. And those, of, those kind of networking services can be physical, on the physical gear, it can be in the virtual form factors. VMware wanted to have a platform to support this new type of networking services. That's going to give you this just-in-time networking infrastructure. At the end of the day, what you're looking for is a transparent network to fulfill the cloud economics, the cloud requirements. Now, before I leave this slide, let me read a quote from a blog commenting on my presentation preview. How many of you actually looked at the preview, YouTube preview? Some of you. So there is a guy commenting on the preview, the, my YouTube preview. If VMware exposes the green box to third-party developers, we could see an entirely new and more powerful ecosystem evolve around VMware vSphere. Like I said, there is no product announcement in this session. 
but I did make sure that there is a green box on my slide. Now, kidding aside, I do believe that this is a journey, and it's a journey that won't be successful without the ecosystem. Now, this is a paradigm shift. Why is there a paradigm shift? Virtualization created a problem, or this is really the cloud that creates the requirement. Networking virtualization is a means, is a means to an end. The end is the cloud economics. And because of this cloud on demand, almost invisible infrastructure, pay-as-you-go model. You want the network to be a lot more transparent. You want the network to be a lot more just-in-time. And because of that, we need a distributed virtual network, a abstraction layer, to hide relatively inflexible infrastructure underneath that. Since this is a repeat session of the Monday session, a lot of people actually came to me and asked me a few questions. i just uh, read a few uh, questions. One question is about, well, actually, I'll read it a little bit later. One of the key things here is, if you view VMware as a hypervisor company, then distributed virtual switch is enough for you. You don't need a distributed virtual network. But if you view VMware as a company, that's going to help you to provision, manage, secure workload on demand efficiently with business agility. That is what distributed virtual switch is about. Now, at the heart of that, there are really two different things. One is this management abstraction that's going to support, still support separation of duty physical or virtualized networking services. And the other part is really a new type of networking service that's going to let you, to, let you do this in, just-in-time, scale-out, multi-tenancy-friendly networking services. So one question from the Monday session was, are VMware proposing radically changing networking protocols in order to make that happen? Absolutely no. We are not changing TCP IP stack for sure. Are VMware going to implement all the networking services? No, this is a more than $50 billion business. Um, I don't think so. Are VMware advocating no physical networking services and instead only virtual services? That's not quite true. We want the physical gears, if nothing else, to integrate better with vSphere, with the workload. With that, this is really the first part of the, my talk. This is a journey. There is a paradigm shift. This paradigm shift is driven by cloud, cloud economics. Not VMware. Whether VMware does it or not, it's going to happen. But VMware wanted to be a thought leader in this space. What we are doing here is we wanted to take a holistic view of what application wants, what workload wants, and the leveraging our networking virtualization expertise and the presenting an architecture framework platform to the industry, to the customers, to fulfill these cloud requirements. We believe that we are in a better position to do this because of our, because we actually own the container of the application. We are the container of the workload. We are the orchestration layer for the workload. We are the orchestration layer for the applications. And we have a track record to do this, to deliver this. Obviously, we don't need the help 
from USA Today to convince you this is, we are in a better position to do that. With that, I'm going to peel the onion a little bit more. Very excited to discuss with you uh, this V chassis. A preview into the technology space we are looking at, how to solve a lot of the problems we, we discussed in the first part of the discussion. First, concept. Now, just in case chassis or networking chassis is a little bit foreign to you, it's literally an extensible physical in the physical world, this extensible networking platform hosting line cards. For software guys, it's really a module or plugins for this comprehensive networking layer 227 services. Now, what we are doing here is virtualized, having a virtual form factor of this. And this is a platform to support, facilitate, and fulfill this distributed virtual network vision by VMware and its ecosystem. Like I said, there are two pieces of that. One is the standard management layer. The other one is a platform to enable this just-in-time distributed scale-out end-to-end networking services. One example is a vChassis distributed virtual switch line card or a intrusion detection line card. It's just two random examples here. At the heart of it, it's really a vertical platform for ecosystem to develop networking solutions, a end-to-end -end networking solutions. There are three major pieces of that. Data plan, control plan, management plan. Data plan is the line rate processing piece. Management plan is where you set up, deploy, configure the policies. And the control plan is really the piece that ties things together. That's the brain behind everything give you a simple example. If you want the data plan to do X for all the Windows 7 virtual machines, the control plan needs to rationalize a little bit and interpret things. Data plan can only do, for this IP address, I do X. But then control plan will have to figure out what are the IP address for my Windows 7 VMs within my data center. This is an important nomenclature we are going to discuss in the next 10 minutes. Data plan, management plan, control plan. Management plan, if the management plan is down for five minutes, five hours, data plan and the control plan will still be operating. Data plan and the control plan will be in a distributed fashion. Now, let me get to spend the next 10 minutes on some of the technical details a little bit. Why we believe this is a platform that's going to change the way people do networking. First, there is a workload-centric network semantics, very rich semantics available. I give four examples. Instantaneous service provision. When you move a workload from one data center to another data center or one rack to another rack, you may not have the patience or luxury to wait for the physical networking service to be purchased, racked up, installed, config. Imagine if you can provision this service instantaneously. Proactive and authoritative visibility and enforcement. Networking industry historically is a very much a discovery kind of based industry. In order to know your neighbor's IP address, MAC address, you send a broadcast packet to know what's your neighbor's IP address. And sometimes you even need to send a broadcast packet in order to know your own IP address. In the virtualized, in this new data center, we know exactly what IP address, what MAC address each of the workload has. Not only that, we know every bit of the memory of that workload has, the runtime state, runtime configuration. We know everything. You don't need to discover a lot of things. This layer is really the better layer to enforce a lot of the networking, whether security or low balance or performance monitoring functionalities. The third one, natural elasticity. 
whenever you add additional server workload, whenever you deploy additional server capacity, you automatically provision additional networking monitoring service capacity at the same time. So imagine you have an elastic net server pool. You, by definition, have a networking, elastic networking service pool. Multi-tenancy support. The traditional model of doing networking appliance in a, some central location, you lose a lot of context. When all of you move a lot of application to the cloud, many of you have this 10.0.0.1 address, right? Probably you have a lot of collision just in this room. When all of you moved your workload into AT&T, Verizon, those kind of cloud, how does the networking security devices, whether virtual or, virtual or physical devices, going to differentiate this package belongs to this tenant versus tenant B, when both of them have this same IP address? Now, if you build this enforcement layer right at a vSphere or vChassis layer, we give you the context so that you can do the right thing. On-demand deployment. This is vCenter, ESX server, and then hypothetically, you can have any type of networking solutions. In this case, distributed traffic shaper solution. Now, if I wanted to distribute a control plan, I distribute, I provision that on demand. Same thing with the data plan. Note, I have a lot more virtual machines on this picture. I have less data plan on this picture. I only deploy the data plan whenever I need, just in time. Steve mentioned yesterday, I, what, I want what I want, and I want it now. That's this VCHAS is going to help you to achieve that vision. Scale out architecture. So this is to reuse the previous slide. The way we look at the scale out is the scale out needs to happen on management plan, control plan, and a data plan, all three different fronts. The way we scale out a management plan is to have a policy-based networking management. There will be a number of things that we'll do. I'll give you two examples here. One is policy composition. When you have a networking solutions exposed by vendor A and an, another type of networking service exposed by vendor B, how is the admin going to consume the service and uh, compose the policies? We wanted to give you this framework so that you can do that. And this framework is also going to match the virtual machine requirements versus the infrastructure capabilities. For instance, if you want my virtual machine to have sub two millisecond latencies, and the infrastructure says I can deliver this, then we can do the matchmaking here. Control plan scale out, it's distributed. Control plan is really the brain behind how to stitch things together. We don't want not, not only a single point of failure, but we want it fully distributed. Wherever there is a workload, instead of wherever there is a networking device. Same thing with data plan. We scale out by having a distributed data plan. Now, what is the secret sauce here? One of the secret sauce here is about to have this distributed scale-out programming model consumable by the networking service providers. Performance. If the performance is going to be worse than the alternative, then this is always going to be the second-class citizen. But that's not how we look at it. 
On the platform side, we can deliver line rate raw performance. In fact, four years ago at VMworld, we demonstrated 10 gig line rate to the virtual machine. And over the last four years, we didn't sit idle. We improved efficiency big time. Today, you can push 10 gig line rate on a contemporary server with a fraction of the CPU cycles available on the server. Performance is not just about raw performance. It's also about controller performance. Sometimes I want line rate, but oftentimes I want, I, I want controller performance. I don't want this tenant or this VM to send more than two gigabits per second to my share for SharePoint server. Networking I.O. control feature set from VDS set a stage for that. So that's on the platform side. And then on the solution side, I already discussed how we wanted to have this very high performance, aggregated performance by having this scale out architecture. A architecture that scale out um, management plan, control plan, and the data plan. And then we also think it's important for the, some of the networking solution line cards to have direct hardware access to for instance, SS, SSL offloading card. And then, last but not least, performance isolation for multi-tenancy. Everyone can claim multi-tenancy support on the checkbox, but can you guarantee the performance isolation when it comes to multi-tenancy? Virtual layer two. In today's status quo layer two technologies, it hurts the workload of virtual machine portability and mobility. Because as this animation shows, you want to move the workload within the data center and across data center, whether for disaster avoidance or for many other use cases, low balance or many other use cases. And we believe that it's important to have a scalable, flexible, fungible, multi-tenant layer two. The reason is, remember Steve and Paul Merritt discussed this physical boundary versus virtual boundary. Virtual layer two is really a foundational technology for, to create this virtual boundary. This particular animation shows that you want to create a network irrespective of your relatively inflexible physical network. You want to create the virtual boundary on the fly, depending on the business need, not how the network was set up three months ago. This is a foundational technology for vChassis For many reasons, this virtual boundary thing is one example. We looked at it as the same thing as virtual memory brought to the table to the operating system several decades ago. Once you give the application developer a flat address space to play with, it's a lot easier to develop network, it's a lot easier to develop applications. Here we wanted to bring a flat, flexible, fungible network to the data center, to your network. And then you can slice and dice network however you want. So I mentioned in my preview of this talk about networking OS or networking hypervisor. It generates some of the buzz on the block sphere. And then when I talk about networking OS, it's really a concept. It's a concept that people can program network a lot easier people can program the networking infrastructure. And the virtual layer two is a foundational technology for that. Now, this is not easy to do. We are working with the, our ecosystem, the switch vendors, to have this virtual layer two defined 
and then give to the customers. To make sure that this virtual layer 2 is, there's no performance impact. It's multi-tenancy aware. It's backward compatible to a lot of the switch that you already have. We can take advantage of the hardware offloading existing today, for instance. So it's not an easy job, but it's a very, very important thing for vChassis. And as a matter of fact, this networking OS or this just-in-time programmable networking infrastructure. Last but not least, consistent or predictable user experience. This is a mock-up screenshot of a future version of vSphere or whatever the UI we are going to have. And uh, if you can see on this picture, or you may not be able to see, I can point to a virtual machine, Windows 7 virtual machine. I know exactly what networking services are provisioned for this Windows 7 VM. vShield, AppSpeed, N1K, Lab Manager are provisioned. So I have a dashboard view of what's going on. Whenever there is something wrong, it's a lot easier for me to go troubleshooting or find out who's doing what. Value. This networking platform, networking OS concept, is really about how to encourage our ecosystem to develop networking applications, services, that's this layer 227 services on top of the new infrastructure. We want people to be able to have the SDK so that they can develop, certify it, and then service the customers. And of course, in the end, get paid for that. VMware is going to leverage this, inter this infrastructure internally. As we announced, there is vShield already from VMware. But more than that, we want innovation to be done on vSphere platform. I just name a few examples here. But this is about possibilities. This is not about what I think you will do. This is about giving you the possibilities, giving you the weapon, so that you can develop some innovative solutions to meet this cloud era, anything, anytime, anywhere, at any scale. This is another way to look at a value. With increasing number of virtual networking services, we expect people to have more and more benefits. The benefits may plateau a little bit when you reach some scale. When you have solutions from different vendors, how do, how do I make sure they interrupt with, among each other? How do I make sure that I don't have to, I can automate a lot of those things? So this vChassis thing is really about a platform to simplify and standardize the management and the development of this new scale-out, just-in-time, multi-tenancy networking services. The purpose is to make it possible so that you can easily do some of the distributed networking programming. We wanted to hide the 200 moving parts of the vSphere so that you get meaningful events like mobility. But you don't need to know the mobility happens because of HA, DRS, vMotion, storage vMotion. We give you the events. And we, we give you a platform so that your solution can interrupt with other people's solution. And a, and then we also give you a platform, give customer a platform so that they can automate the consumption of those networking services.
Now, we also understand the importance of physical networking service out there. It's going to stay for a long time to come. And some of the control plan API primitives we were talking about early on can be consumed by the physical networking gears. So this is about how to make the networking end-to-end -end working better for the workload, for the application. Now, the summary slide. We innovated on virtual switch, and then later on, distributed virtual switch. And then we have an API to support this distributed virtual switch, obviously. But everyone has cloud fever now. That implies distributed virtual switch is not enough. Because in order for people to have this type of just-in-time, anytime, anywhere type of networking infrastructure, it's not just about layer two switching. It's about a lot of the advanced networking policies, low balance, security, IP address management, when acceleration, you name it. We want to have a comprehensive virtualized network. And in order to do that, we want a purposely built platform to support this distributed virtual network. That's this VChat thing I was discussing in the last 15 to 20 minutes. But in the end, it's really to have this distributed virtual network. What is the end game of this? The end game of this is the workload sees a very flexible, transparent network end to end. And we really liberate this workload from the relatively inflexible networking infrastructure people have today. So this is really a journey, a journey that for the customers, it's really about cloud economics. Pay as you go, on demand, almost invisible infrastructure, elastic networking service. And we translate that into this anytime, anywhere, at any scale, for anything requirements. And for our ecosystem, we want you to innovate on our platform so that we deliver this cloud economics to our customers. This is a standard slide that they put in each of the presentation at VMworld. And with that, thank you very much. And if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, either ask me now or send me offline email, howie at vmware.com. Fill out your survey for this session on your mobile device. And with that, any questions? So the question is, for this type of virtual line card in this virtual V chassis, is that a virtual machine or a kernel module or whatnot? It can be anything. We are not saying that it has to be in a VM. Um, it can be different form factors. In fact, the API will be flexible enough to give people different options. Thanks. Any other questions? So the question is, is there any virtual like firewall, firewall service from a particular vendor? This session is about a vision. We are not announcing any product timeline or ecosystem um, in this talk. You can imagine, since we think this is very important uh, for our customers, we are working on it pretty, pretty hard. 
And we are not going to do this alone. A platform is useless without an ecosystem. That's just uh, cannot be more true, right? Anything else? Any questions on this side? So the question is about, is there an API for the VChat? Like I said, this talk is about paving, uh, painting a vision. Um, we are obviously working with our ecosystem of this, and then at some time we are going to discuss more details in public about more specifics. Um, but today, in this VM world, we are just uh, giving you the vision where VMware is leading the networking virtualization towards. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>